Jets fans, the regular season is rolling up upon us, and we're kicking off preseason this weekend, and I've got a lot of things I want from the Jets this year. We're going to dive into all of that and more on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Jets fans, and happy Friday. Welcome to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. But most of all, we just really love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more, as right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started and learn more. Now, like I said at the top of the episode, obviously, I've got some wishes for the Jets this year, and uh, it's going to be, you know, a fun year, I think. I'm I'm setting myself up for both excitement and disappointment. I know that inevitably the Jets are probably going to have some issues. It wouldn't surprise me if there's going to be some drama. I, I think this season has some of the greatest levels of uncertainty uh, that this franchise has ever faced, right? You have two elite level players very likely on the way out, or maybe you find a way to convince them to stay. It's it's a tough situation to be in. The Jets kind of can only really blame themselves for part of it. Not everything here is their fault, to be clear. Um, but by the same token, you do kind of wonder how much they were planning for all of this and how well they've planned for it. But you know what? That's tomorrow questions. For right now, I have a few wishes for the season that I want to get through. The first wish I have is that the Jets go back to what made them really successful, right? A few years ago when the Jets had that elite team under Maurice, Winnipeg really sustained pressure on a consistent basis. You had four waves, four lines that could roll uh, through most opponents. And when you kind of softened up your opponent's bottom six and your top and their top six with like matchup minutes, it then allowed your top nine to really start to uh, find scoring lanes and wear down the opponent. The Jets haven't really been able to do that over the last few years because they just don't have the skill and depth to pull it off. This year, I think they're going to get closer to it. I don't think it's going to be exact. And you might look at the bottom six and realize that, yeah, you know what? The Jets are kind of going top heavy, which is sort of a Rick bonus uh, special. Whether you like that or not, I think it's kind of a stylistic thing. Uh, I also think that there are some tactical limitations uh, thanks to this roster and maybe not having as much elite talent on both sides of the puck as some other teams. But you know what? What the Jets do have is pretty good. And I feel like it should be enough to at least allow the Jets to be competitive in almost every game. I think Winnipeg will um, really cause trouble for some uh, opponents who are maybe used to a weaker Jets team that lacks offensive skill up and down the lineup. I think this team is going to be physical, but also good at creating chaos down low. And maybe even having some soft hands here and there to finish good opportunities. I think the second thing that I'm wishing for this year is an expanded role for the youth. Now, I think we're already going to start to see that. I think we're going to have a big year from Cole Perfetti, who quite honestly could be uh, a, a godsend for the Jets down the middle. Not that Dubois was bad, but I felt like with Dubois, he had games where he sort of vanished, and then he would have games where he would dominate for stretches before vanishing again, right? You, you really couldn't tell which version of him you were going to get. And especially towards the end of his Jets tenure, I think we all knew that the, the writing was kind of on the wall. And I feel like Dubois himself uh, kind of played himself out of favor with the Jets fans. So overall, you know, I'm thinking per Perfetti has a chance to really step up. But I'm also hoping for step ups from guys like uh, Mason Appleton, who's, who's not young necessarily, like super young, but he's not old either. Uh, I'm also hoping for a big year from Dylan Sandberg. I think he was on the right track towards becoming a, a very routine NHLer and somebody who, uh, quite frankly, the Jets coaching staff should put a lot of faith in because in the limited minutes that he's played so far, uh, he's really started to boss proceedings. He'll kind of have one of those goals against, I think it was um, in the postseason, sort of in the back of his mind. I think it was what was that the Vegas series. But you know what? It is what it is. He wasn't at fault for uh, the Jets falling behind in that series. I thought. 
you know, for the most part, he's had a great, great run of form for the Jets. So Dylan Sandberg, I think he's well on his way to becoming a fan favorite. Another young player that I would really like to see step up is Vili Heinola. Now, it's going to be tough for Heinola to actually get a chance to because right now the roster is pretty jammed up. So unless uh, Winnipeg moves out of contract, right now I don't really see a lot of space for Vili. But assuming he does actually somehow make the team, whether it's in the press box or somehow into the starting lineup, I really want to see him seize that role this time. We've seen flashes of brilliance from Heinola. He hasn't always put it together, but I promise you, if he puts it together, if he starts to show why he was such a highly touted pick when he was taken, he has the potential to be um, really an elite back-end quarterback and the kind of player that the Jets desperately need to get the puck up the ice. A lot of people tend to think that you know physicality and strength and size is what will help you defensively, but that only works in some scenarios. With the Jets, one of the biggest problems that they have is just getting the puck up the ice, period. Whether it's under control, through breakout passes, no matter what you look at, the Jets just aren't that mobile when it comes to getting the puck up the ice. And so they find themselves hemmed in the defensive zone a lot. And sure, Heinola does not really defend all that great in his own zone. I will say that he has better interior positioning than people realize, and he's also not afraid to thieve the puck. And you know what? If you look between the whistles and stuff, Heinel is actually low-key pretty dirty. That dude will chop at somebody uh, so much uh, if they so much as look at him funny. So he is he's pretty chippy. He's got some uh, real good puck-moving ability and, and smarts. And I think when you have a guy like Sandberg in, you've got a guy like Heinel in um, on top of Morrissey, P or Dylan, maybe Schmidt, I, I just feel like you might have a more balanced group than what we've got right now. But other than that, you know, I think the Jets are in a relatively okay state. Uh, this team, this year, I, I want them to just really cut loose and have fun. I think last year they looked like they were enjoying themselves for half the season, and then the second half was just suffering and misery for everyone involved, whether it was us watching it as fans or for the players who just looked like they wanted to kill each other. So, yeah, you know, this year it'd be nice if throughout the whole season or as much of it as you can get, Winnipeg is enjoying playing hockey. When Winnipeg is loose and flying, the Jets are a really, really tough team to stop. I mean, this this squad has legitimately great offensive potential if they're deployed in the right way. Now, I've seen some folks suggest that the current Bones lineup that he has uh, put together in camp is kind of risk averse. There's a little more conservatism, and I, I don't disagree. But I also look at this team and I kind of wonder how much more offense you're going to squeeze out of it with the roster being the way that it is right now. I think it's fine enough, but I do think that there are some opportunities for guys like Kupari and Ayafalo to really seize bigger roles with this team. And hopefully those roles involve scoring more goals because that's one thing the Jets could really benefit from. Now, of course, speaking of younger guys stepping up, I want to talk about kids camp, uh, a.k.a you know, training camp and stuff as the Jets are prepping for their first preseason games over this coming weekend. Uh, but before we go any further, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Bird Dogs. When it comes to pants, obviously, a lot of you have some, some comfortable ones. Maybe you have some ones that you don't love as much, whether it's the style that kind of looks a little bit dated or the material grabs you in the wrong places. Bird Dogs is here to help. They've got great, soft, stretchy material that comes with an anti-stink, sweat-wicking fabric. It's stretchy. It hugs you and accentu accentuates you in the right way so that you look more sculpted. And you know what? It is comfortable as heck. And you know what? They've got plenty of pants for all sorts of occasions, whether you're looking for a night out on the town with your friends, maybe you're going golfing. Bird Dogs wants you to feel and look as good as you feel. Feel good and look as good as you feel, right? Uh, you want to be comfortable, you want to look sharp, and Bird Dogs has your back. So if you're ready to get started, go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL or enter promo code locked on NHL at checkout for a free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NHL for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off, we promise you. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for joining us in tonight's episode as we dive into uh, Winnipeg's offseason. And you know what? We are just a little bit away from the preseason. I think a lot of us are probably excited to have hockey back. The Jets will be playing um, on Sunday against Edmonton. Now, of, of course, the... Um, <laughs> The, the the preseason, or like I guess the pre-preseason, you might call it, 
at Penticton didn't exactly go well for the Jets when they faced Edmonton the last time. But you know what? It's a different time. This is more a more pro-ready lineup. The Jets are actually going to have their big guns. And uh, you know what? I think this is a really good opportunity for some of the kids to really impress. There are a couple of names in particular that I've circled. Um, some of them I've already talked about in previous episodes, so I'm not going to spend as much time talking about them as I am some of these other players. One of the ones that I'm really looking for uh, is uh, Selimanson. And I know I've talked about him previously, and you might say, well, you just said you weren't going to talk about guys you've rehashed. But I promise you, Selimanson for me is a guy who's on the right track towards being a stud defender for the Jets. Um, he's very clean, very smooth, very intelligent. I like his defensive positioning. I like the way that he gaps stuff. He seems like a really smooth, controlled defender, and he's still kind of working on the offensive side of things, but at least defensively, you've got a really rock-solid kind of player. And in uh, camp earlier today, Mike McIntyre from the uh, Winnipeg News, of course, was checking out some of the lineups, and you know who Solomonson was playing with? Josh friggin' Morrissey. That is a vote of confidence if I've ever seen one. Now, Salmon Man, I, I really do think has legit top four potential. I don't know if it's going to be top pairing because I feel like when you're in that sort of role, you really do expect more offensive production. And while Salomonson did score in one of the Penticton games, it wasn't the kind of goal that you'd watch and say, that's really repeatable, right? It did sort of leak through the keeper. And so you're not really expecting that to be um, a primary facet of his game. But if what he does is facilitate play and does it really, really well at a level that kind of matches close to what you'd ask for from a top end blue liner, maybe you can make it work. It doesn't have to be like a 60-point defender, but somebody who can keep the puck up the ice, who can help create pressure and overwhelm opponents. I think that is very helpful. And of course, if he's really sound in his own end, that is what we call a bonus. Another kid that I really want to see step up and who I'm actually expecting big things from is Danny Zilkin. And I know that Zilkin is, is uh, someone that we've talked about before. I am a big fan of Danny's. I feel like he has a really nice rotational set of skills. You know, he's got good passing, good vision, good spatial awareness. I feel like he's got a nice shot. His edge work is reasonably good. He's just a really solid player who can probably bounce up and down lineups because he's got so much skill, uh, but has like the, you know, the industry and the work ethic to keep making the most of it, right? He's not a player who likes to sit still. He wants to force turnovers. He wants to get back up the ice with possession he is a really exciting prospect, and I feel like while he might not be as flashy as some of the other kids, I think he's got some underrated intrigue. And he was actually with Niederreiter and Perfetti earlier today, which is a very strong endorsement from the coaching staff. Zilkin, I think, has you know a, a closer run to the NHL and, than some of the other kids. He seems like he's got the pro-ready work ethic and the ability to improve, so I'm excited for him. I think he's got a bright future for the Jets. I guess the question is just how bright is he going to get? Because uh, when he was drafted, I think a lot of folks were sort of looking at him as maybe of like a like a middle six or a bottom six player. But I do wonder if things really pan out, if he really hits the ground running, does he start to earn himself a bigger role with the Jets? It'd be nice if Winnipeg has, you know, a versatile top nine center or winger who can play multiple positions, who can contribute offensively no matter where he is in the lineup, and can like promote play positively even in limited minutes. If you know what I'm talking about, you all remember Matthew Perot. It's a shame that Matty P was kind of made of glass towards the end of his career, but the reality was when Perot was on the ice, the Jets were usually better. Uh, his creativity down low was uh, really enough to create chaos. He was very skilled. He had a great shot, and I felt like his offensive positioning was the kind that really should have led to more points. So if Zilkin can 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 come close to that in any way, shape, or form, I'm very down with that. I think Danny's got some fun potential, and I am excited to see what he does in training camp. The last player that I want to see in, in, in preseason and really get a sense of is Shibrikov, right? Now, we've talked about Shibrikov briefly. Uh, I feel like I'm going a little bit against my word earlier, saying I wasn't going to rehash all the same names. But I think Chibrikov really bears worth repeating because of you know Winnipeg's forward prospects, he might have A, one of the highest ceilings, and B, one of the shortest routes to the NHL. 
I'm not going to sit here and tell you that he's going to make um, the Jets out of camp because I think that's pretty unrealistic, right? There's a lot of veteran experience on this team. I think that's going to trump right now. And also, we know the Jets like to maintain ELCs, right? So you don't want to burn a year if you don't have to. And I think in, in Shiprakov's case, he's probably not quite ready to make the jump to the NHL just yet. I think we'll see in preseason that he'll show flashes. He'll have some moments that look great. But at the end of the day, he's still a little, a little bit raw coming over just from Russia not too, too long ago and uh, getting used to North American hockey. So again, I, I think that he's got some really fun skill. I, it felt like when he was playing in Pen, in Penticton, he was like the best Jets player on the ice other than Milich, right? Um, it felt like Chiprikov was everywhere down low. He had a great goal. I think he had an assist to uh, just a really strong performance, even if he didn't have an assist. Uh, his passing, I thought, was nice. His controlled edge work was strong, and he was able to get around defenders with relative ease. So in terms of like his skating and stuff, he looks very smooth. Chipper Call, for me, um, is is really close compared to like a Lambert or something. I think Brad and Chaz probably need at least another year of seasoning. But Chibrikov might actually be capable of stepping into an NHL lineup now and at least holding his own, right? Maybe not being the world's best player, but somebody who could reasonably keep up and skate. So I'm excited for him. I think this is a chance for Chibrikov to really impress. And already from what we've seen in the early camps, if what we're going to find later with him is what we've seen so far, but, you know, obviously improved, I think we are in for a somewhat special uh, minor, minorly fan favorite kind of player. Now, I've talked a, a lot about some of the, the present players. I also want to talk about the future and why this could really be bright for the Jets, especially with all of the changes that could happen this season. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we walk through our final thoughts. And obviously, you know what? I, I think it's worth talking about the Jets' future, right? Because... For me, it is pretty wide open. Winnipeg has a lot of directions this team could go. Not all of them are good. And I'm going to be honest, I think one of the worst things that could happen to the Jets is that they keep trying to extend a window that doesn't really exist. I think they've done that over the last few years. I think they've tried to do it this offseason too, but I think it's a lot less of that than it is um, like adding legit improvements to the team. Obviously, the Dubois trade is just one move, but it made such an impact on reshaping Winnipeg's top nine that I think it's really worth shouting out. Now, I want to say that the future is wide open because the Jets could really go in a couple of different directions. If they extend Shifley and Hellebuck, I think at that point, you really got to cash your chips in and try and make this team as strong as possible against what should be a pretty um, strong Western Conference, right? It's not going to be easy getting out of here. And I think it's especially difficult when the teams that they're going to be facing are squads like Vegas who have depth for days. And I know people will say, well, they skirt cap certain concerns and stuff, but listen, they still allow that crap, right? So Vegas is just making the best use of the rules that they know favors them. LA, another young team that's starting to really develop some skilled prospects. And certainly with Dubois now in tow, they might feel that they have a pretty darn good a pretty darn good top nine. But for the Jets, right, Winnipeg could either try and hang with them or start to, to really plan for the future because four to five years from now, this Jets core is going to be totally different, and I suspect it's going to be a really fun group. Already we've seen players like Rucka McCrory, um, Colby Barlow, and a few others really ingratiate themselves with the fans, and the fans really ate it up. I felt like this was one of the most connected – groups of of young prospects and look part of that is that the jets media has really been pushing this angle but i also think it's very genuine i think a lot of these guys are super personable uh the energy is infectious there's just a lot to like with this jets group and i feel like if they don't somehow come together and don't pan out i'd actually be heartbroken i really like these kids i'm very excited to see what they do for the jets in the in you know navy and white sometime in the next couple of seasons. It'd be nice if it was sooner and if they were ready to make the jump, but let's pump the brakes and at least give them their fair due process of time in order to get up to NHL speed. So a lot there. I suppose what does concern me, though, is that for as bright as that all seems, the Jets need all of those prospects to really pan out, and that's just not likely. If Winnipeg was super, super blessed and fortunate, they get NHLers out of most of those picks. On a good day, right, 
like one to two prospects that you draft becoming an NHLer might actually be pretty okay. Obviously, you'd want you know a handful, but with how the the league is and how the draft is often a bit of a blind box, I feel like this is one of those scenarios where sometimes you don't have to uh, overthink it. You know, you you might want some of that tertiary offensive production and stuff, but at the end of the day, you know. If you get a guy who ends up being on your fourth line and really shuts down the opponents, that's not too bad. I guess the challenge is the Jets haven't always gotten that either, right? Uh, they've not really been developing as many prospects into full-time NHLers. So this year, I really want to see uh, Winnipeg make more of that opportunity, right? This is a year where I think the Jets should be auditioning players for big roles with this team because Velarde could be here for a long time. Ayafalo might be here for a little bit. Um Kupari could become a mainstay of this team. I want to see them push to their limits and see what they're capable of. Show us who they can be under pressure and whether or not they're the kinds of players that can help rebuild Winnipeg's core into something truly special. Assuming Hellebuck and Shifley do dip, obviously that changes the arithmetic a little bit. You won't be fighting for a competitive spot. You're looking to start to tank and really amass futures. I know the Jets have said repeatedly they want stuff for the present, but I can guarantee you for what Shifley and Hellebuck are worth, you are not getting anything anywhere near what Winnipeg is probably asking. They probably want a King's Ransom for all these guys. They've probably asked a lot and they, they're probably hoping that somebody knocks them off their socks with an amazing offer, but I can guarantee you that's Jeff, that stuff's just not happening unless somebody gets really desperate. And so far, nobody seems all that desperate for either Hellebuck or Shifley. It's been relative quiet, and I think that's why both players have started to rethink their whole desire to leave, because leaving the Jets is kind of a bit of a, a departure from a cushy spot. Winnipeg, as a team, is a good place to land. You've got some good job security. Um, there's you know a fan base that loves and adores you. And I feel like with Shifley and Hellebuck, they have the, the chance to really lead the next core. And I think I would prefer it with uh, at least one of them in tow, preferably Hellebuck. You know, with Shifley, I, I love him, but he's had his issues over the years. So if if he felt he wanted to depart, I'm, I'm not really going to stop him. But Hellebuck, Hellebuck, selfishly, I would be pretty broken up if he leaves. I'd be curious to know, though, what you're thinking about Winnipeg's future. Do you see it as bright? Are you thinking it's maybe a little bit dimmer than I'm suggesting? Give me your thoughts in the comments below or at my social medias at HL Living Loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. For tonight's show, though, that is all the time that we have. I thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day and really appreciate you joining, tuning in. Be sure to check in this weekend for some preseason previews and some talk about Winnipeg's upcoming lines all on future episodes of Locked on Jets. But like I said, for tonight's show, that is all the time that we have. Thanks so much for making us your first listen of the day every day. We will see you back here later. And as always, go Jets go.